Uh, hello, everyone. First of all, thanks for, for the invitation. Thank you, uh, Ms. Mzia. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here with you and uh, talk about this, uh, I think, very important topic. I hope you, you will find this uh, meeting uh, interesting. And after this meeting, you will think about these topics uh, that I will talk about. And I will be glad if you, if any stage of your life you will use the information I'm going to share now. Uh, so our uh, topic is mental health and uh, how uh, can we deal with the challenges uh, which are in every day uh, in front of us. And since we are talking about the issues related to the mental health and the general issue of our meeting is mental hygiene, let's call it uh, like this, uh, let's uh, let me offer a definition of this term. But before that, I will tell you one interesting thing. In any educational institution like school or university, we are, you will have to write an academic thesis or article or just paper. You need to follow one important rule. When you decide to write a paper, it's necessary to start writing by explaining the issue, word, concept, uh, uh, or term on which you are preparing this paper. This advice will come in hand both at schools and at universities. Uh, that's why let's uh, follow this rule. And uh, I will start uh, my uh, meeting with definition of the term. If we can clarify mental uh, health is, if we understand what mental hygiene is, then it will be easy to figure out how to protect yourself from mental hygiene disorders and all the tech challenges. And also we will discuss how we can deal with it. Uh, in this way, we will reduce the emergence of problems that contribute to the violation of mental hygiene. In general, there are a numerous definition of this term. Most often mental hygiene is interpreted this way. The term mental hygiene refers daily activities that support and maintain mental health. Public health guidelines tell us that we need to do small tasks daily to maintain physical and mental hygiene, like a showering, for, for instance, or brushing the teeth. Just like going to the gym also is about building up uh, our strength. Mental hygiene is about building up the mental muscles. It's an important way to maintain good mental health and build the resilience uh, we need to help face challenges in the future or everyday life. Uh, for instance, according to World Health Organization uh, statistic, every 10th person in the world has an ongoing mental health problem. And this is really huge number. You know, obviously we need to pay more attention to this issue. However, it may not be yet be uh, entirely clear to many what mental health means or includes. Uh, this is what we should know about mental health. <clears throat> First, uh, psychological health and mental health, these words are synonyms with each other. Second, mental health is not just about not having any uh, di diagnosis of mental disorder. According to the worldwide uh, World Health Organization, mental health uh, refers to the emotional, psychological and social well-being of a person. And this term well-being is mean, um, means like uh, uh, to feel comfortable with your life, uh, to feel comfortable with your relationship with other people's for instance, uh, with friends, with partners, uh, also to feel <clears throat> comfortable at home and to feel comfortable in general with your life. And the third uh, thing, what is important is that a mental health disorder don't attribute to, uh, to a specific uh, diagnosis, for, for instance, depression, anxiety, and etc. At some stage of everyone's life, all of us experience mental health problems, and often this is caused by everyday events. For instance, tense 
unstable environment, depressing news or experience, or being a trans uh, transition transi nah, sorry a transitional stage of life. Uh, for instance, puberty stage, or usually we call it teenager stage. Uh, it, it's a transi uh, transitional stage of life because there are inner amount of changes take place in uh, our mental, biological, and social life. Uh, and also, I want to tell you, mental health includes uh, some issues also. Uh, I want to clarify three of them. Uh, first one is emotional stability uh, implies self-esteem, acceptance towards oneself, ourself, the ability to share feelings to others. The second one is social well-being. Mental health determines the quality of our relationship and, in general, the ability to maintain relationships that conditions our social well-being. And the third one, and most important for us, is the cognitive state. How and by what means we receive information from the outside world. How we process and analyze, remember, think and solve the problems. It is largely due to the state of our mental health. And uh, you know that every day um, we get a lot of information from, for instance, from other people, uh, from school, and most of all from uh, social network. When uh, we just scrolling down the video, videos via TikTok or Instagram, a lot of information are there and we uh, see these pictures or videos or listen to them and all this information just make us to overthink sometimes and it's somehow affect us and i i am going now to uh, share you my perspective how and why this a lot of information from social media and in general social media how it affect us uh, effect on our mental health uh, or is there any connection between these two aspects uh, one hand social media and on the other hand our mental health <clears throat> so uh, the main part of our seminar uh, and the topic of discussion is related this cognitive status and the information how the information just come uh, to our mind do you think uh, so here is uh, two very interesting question i think uh, do you think about how many hours you spend on social media every every day or have you wondered the minutes and sometimes hours we spent on social media networks and how it affect on our mental health i will try to share interesting perspectives with you through the analysis of these issues i hope uh, you will think about these topics in the future or just Google some information, more information about it after our meeting. <clears throat> so, in a 2023 article by BMC Psychology, uh, we can read that the daily consumptions of social networks has a negative impact on our mental health. To, more, uh, to be more specific, people who spend an average of three, five hours a day on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, have emotional difficulties, high levels of anxiety and changes in self-esteem. All this information is scientifically proved and you can just trust this information because I just gather all this information from very, um, very good uh, sites, from very uh, I mean, trustworthy, organizations, articles, and researches. So one, one more interesting question. Uh, let's think about why social networks can have such a negative impact on our mental health. What is there in them that affect us so badly? I'm not going to demonize social networks in general, or I'm not going to be a big guy who tells you that don't use don't use smartphones or social networks. No, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not going to do this. But <clears throat> let's discuss and think about uh, this issue from different perspective. 
So, uh, human beings, we, humans, are social creatures. We need the companionship of others to thrive in life. And the strength of our connection has a huge impact on our mental health and happiness. Being socially connected to others can easy stress, anxiety, and depression. Also, on the other hand, boost self-worth, provide comfort and joy, prevent loneliness, which is very important, and even aid your hour to uh, aid ourselves in, in, in life in general. In today's world, many of us rely on social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, we use these platforms every day. <clears throat> and we use it to connect with each other. While each has its benefits, it's important to remember that social media can never be a replacement for real world human connections. If you're spending an excessive amount of time on social media and feelings of sadness, dissatisfaction, frustration, or loneliness are impacting, impacting your life, it may be time to re-examine your online habits and find a healthier balance. So when we use all these platforms uh, and get all this information in our mind, sometimes our uh, psychic, our mind cannot deal with all this amount of information and in this way we just became maybe depressed maybe became anxiety and all other issues just arise social media may promote negative experiences such as inadequacy about your life or your appearance and this is very important part of my seminar because uh, our appearance is very important for us, each of us. And in your age, when you are a teenager, uh, for all of you, it's important how you look like, how others think about you, how others think about your appearance, your outfit, or some of things. And even if you know that images or videos you are viewing on social media are manipulated or photoshopped or something like this, they can still make you feel insecure how you look or what's going on in your own life. Similarly, uh, we all aware that other people tend to share just the highlights of their lives. Really, the low points that everyone experiences. It means that when we see uh, other people's Instagram stories or Facebook posts and they are happy, they are in beautiful places and they eating very good foods or um, just they have very beautiful clothes, uh, we should think about it that it's not an everyday life of, of this person. Or maybe it's a part of their life that they want to show us. Maybe it's not a real life of them. And when we see all this information and watch all, all, all the videos or listen some videos, it affects us. We, it it makes us to think that this is their everyday life. And if we don't have the similar life like them, we think that we are not cool enough like them and that's why we maybe became depressed sites such as facebook and instagram seem to arise feelings that other are having more fun on or living better lives than we are the idea that you are missing out on certain things can impact our self-esteem triggered anxiety and fuel even greater social media use, much like an addiction. And 
nowadays a lot of psychologists think and writing about this addiction on social media and i will speak about this in detail in a few minutes another very important thing is isolation a study at the university of Pennsylvania found that high usage of facebook snapchat or an instagram increase rather decrease feelings of loneliness conversely the study found that reducing social media usage can actually make you feel less lonely and isolated and improve your overall well-being and what is well-being i already speak about uh, another thing which is uh, very important also and very uh, i mean a lot of times students teachers and a lot of i mean even psychologists talk about this thing i mean cyberbullying and you know what is cyberbullying uh, and how it happened even every day in our life there is a study that about 10 percent of teenagers report being bullied on social media and many other users and are subjected to offensive comments social media platforms such as twitter or instagram uh, may be hotspot for hurtful lie rumors lies and abuse then that can leave lasting emotional scars and you know how how it's difficult to deal with cyberbullying a lot of students have some kind of private group chats or <clears throat> messenger chats and they are just uh, texting and texting and texting about uh, others and these others are also in the same group chats and they see all this information and uh, when we just texting about uh, bad things about others its effect on their emotional <clears throat> condition our social media use may be problematic if it cause our uh, it if if it cause to neglect face-to-face -face relationship distracts us from work from school from activities or leaves us feeling envious angry or depressed similarly if you are motivated to use social media just because you are bored or lonely or want to post something to make others jealous or upset it may it may be time to rethink your social media habits it's very important that all this information what we get from the social media make us to think and think and think again and again and again about others life and uh, we became in a position like uh, we want to live with others life and we don't think about ourselves it's a problem when using social media has become a substitute for a lot of your offline social interacts interaction even if you are out with friends you still feel the need to constantly check social media often uh, driven by feeling that others may be having more fun than you and that's why we are just taking our uh, mobile phones and scrolling or something like this just want to see something new i'm talking about this <clears throat> and it's really it's really a big problem and uh, here is the interesting moment how can we solve this problem it's a very important question and when i'm preparing this <clears throat> seminar also uh, sorry for my voice about <clears throat> football it just got <laughs> that's why sorry uh, so how we can so solve this problem uh, of course uh, there is no easy way 
There is no one uh, receipt. How can we deal all this problem? And uh, often psychologists, psychologists in Georgia also just like to share some steps and they think that all these steps just were useful and uh, can solve all the problems. It's not working like this. We psychologists can share information in general. There's no one way how to solve the problem. The main thing is that you really, it, 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 uh, the main thing is that uh, you should really want to make some changes in your life to try small steps to achieve the goal. Forming a new behavior is a complex process. It's not easy to start new things. Not to use, maybe, maybe not to use mobile phone, not to use social media. It's not easy. And maybe it, it will take some weeks or months even. Forming a new behavior, as I already mentioned, is a complex process. Maybe this process will take you weeks, even months. For example, if you want to throw a ball in the basket, into the basket, you may not succeed from the first time, time, try. But if you practice a lot, the result will come. <clears throat> it happens the same way about other things. If you want changes in your life, you have to set small goal and do everything to achieve it. You can then make bigger changes as well. If you set such a big goal from the beginning that you get tired of performing and stop in the middle of the way, there will be no point in fighting. When you want to change something, you have to behave smartly and work small steps forward, especially when it comes to mental health. Uh, 2018 University of Pennsylvania study found that reducing social media use to 30 minutes a day result in a significant reduction in levels of anxiety, depression, loneliness, sleep problems. But you don't need to cut back on your social media use that drastically to improve your mental health. It does not mean that you just throw away all these platforms in one day. No, it's not working like this. The same study concluded that just being more mindful of your social media use can have beneficial result on our mood and focus. And now I want to share some steps. How can we just deal with, uh, with this issue? How can we prevent ourselves to use the social media. Maybe one of them will be useful for you. First one, you use an app to track how much time you spend on social media each day. And our smartphones uh, already have this kind of apps. We can see how much time weekly or daily we use or spend on social media. Then set a goal for how much you want to reduce it by and you you can check it every day the second one is turn off our phones at certain times of the day such as when we are driving or we are in the way of house in a meeting with other people in the gym having a dinner spending time with our friends with our family members or playing with other kids don't take phones with us for instance, even in bathroom, because a lot of people just take it and we don't think about this, how it affect, uh, affect on our uh, cognitive state. As you remember, in the first part of my seminar, I mentioned that the most important thing is our cognitive state, because we get information and we think about this, we mm, just overwhelmed by this information. Uh, also, it's important uh, uh, to disable social media notification, especially when it's a bedtime, because 
uh, when, when our body is ready to start to sleep and our smartphone just light it up and we get some notification, we are just alarmed and we uh, started this you know, scrolling and other things and the moment uh, that we are ready to sleep is missed. Also, it's uh, the last one is uh, to remove social media apps from our phone from time to time, not all the time. Uh, maybe one, one week we should use only Facebook or only Instagram or only TikTok in certain period of, of the day. Uh, yes, it maybe sounds too drastic, but it's really good thing to think about. Uh, and the last one, I want to, let's um, summarize our meeting. Uh, to maintain mental health is one of the most difficult challenges nowadays for all of us, not for uh, for you, for the students. No, adults also have this kind of challenges. Even me, sometimes I have these challenges. There are several reasons for this, in, in, that we have the mental problems. In general, mental health is something that uh, is not easy to see for a stable. I mean, when someone uh, says that I have a mental problem, it's not easy to find out what kind of problem does he or she have or does he or she have any kind of problem because we cannot see these mental processes therefore if there is any problem we will find it late sometimes people in general don't like to go to the doctors when they have some kind of uh, physical problems sometimes we are just lazy, uh, we just want to postpone this meeting for another time. And when something serious happens, then we remember our own physical health and then go to the doctor. It's, it's not a correct way. This is the case with mental health also. Until something uh, very big problems arise, we don't pay attention to our mental health. However, if we follow the rules from the beginning, the problems will not arise. Hmm? Hopefully my seminar today will help uh, you at least a little bit to realize this topic, to make you think about how important mental uh, health is in general. And also I wish you all not to have any mental health issue in your, in your life. Thank you. Um, I'm done now and if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to share with me I'm ready to listen. Uh, this Anastasia Shreilashvili just asked is social media good for us it's a very general question I think and uh, as I already discussed it depends how we use it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that, no, it's a very bad thing to use Facebook or Instagram and TikTok. No, it's a way how we get information now. In uh, maybe, uh, I mean, 10 years or 20 years ago, all the people get information from newspapers or television or something like this. And this is a new way, TikTok, Instagram and social platforms, how we get the information. So it's not a bad in general but it depends uh, how much time we spend on social media. I hope I will answer your question. Thank you. It was a really interesting question. Uh, so another question from Otto, how many hours are allowed to using phone uh, properly? Um, also, there is no uh, certain hours, I mean, uh, no one can tell you that uh, uh, three hours is okay or five hours or something like this. Uh, it depends how it affects on your everyday life. If you have a homework or some projects or meetings or something like this and uh, <clears throat> you just um, 
searching something or viewing something or just scrolling videos and uh, you missed this meeting or you forgot to do something, it affects badly. You, sh you should just think about uh, uh, how many hours it's worth to spend on social media. Maybe for me, it's okay to spend two hours or three hours for you, maybe one hour or five hours. But in general, uh, psychologists uh, just make a recommendation that it's okay to spend maybe one or two hours a day, not more. Because when you are using phone all the time, with uh, when you are with friends or when you are with boss and have a dinner or conversation, you and you just take the, the phone and start f scrolling or texting with someone. It's not a good thing, I think. <clears throat> Thank you also for your question. <clears throat> Uh, I also want to ask you a question, Mr. Shota. Uh, I have a, a question like this. We spend a lot of, as a teacher, spend a lot of time in computer because we have so many, um, uh, so many uh, cases to solve and do our uh, projects and something like, it, uh, like that. And uh, what can we do? We have to spend. Uh, yeah, How is okay. our mental health? How is? Okay, thank you for, for your question. <clears throat> uh, after the coronavirus and uh, we just uh, uh, starting the self-isolation and uh, we starting these online meetings in 2020, a lot of uh, psychologists just started research how uh, effect on our mental health the screen time. And uh, yes, it's not a good thing to use uh, uh, the laptop or any gadgets uh, uh, more than half of the day or something like this. Even we teachers have a lot of things to do you know, via computer, but uh, uh, we can just uh, split our work step by step to do some things for today, uh, some of them for tomorrow and then day after tomorrow and, and like this. Uh, when we cannot manage our time, how we can effectively use our gadgets in this way this is very bad for our mental health because for instance if you are using the laptop uh, or any gadgets uh, uh, most of the day uh, our eyes and cognitive states are just really exhausted and at the end of the day maybe we have some headache or some problems I, with our eyes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, there are some questions here. Uh, Uto is asking, uh, in these teenagers, they have so many time and they don't using right what's your advice how we spend time with without phone because it's very uh okay if when we are addicted on our phones and on social media and it's a really a big part of of our day and uh, one day we decided to stop using them yes it's really hard because there are a lot of free times and maybe we think that now what what should i do uh, if you just uh, make some kind of daily schedule that uh, in the morning i should do this 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 in the evening like this you should think about how you can manage your day if you find out something interesting for you not only to reading books it's not the only way to read the book Maybe it's very good for you to just, just go outside and walk away or uh, watch some movies or uh, some or maybe see your friends or something like this. You can find out something interesting for you. You should find something interesting to worth spend time on this activity. Mm -hmm. Question, Mr. Shota. 
Uh, I want to ask you, you have mentioned AI recently, and I want to ask you, do you think that AI is a, uh, is a real threat for teachers, not for students, for teachers? For example, I am English language teacher, and recently I was checking SS of my students, but I guessed it wasn't written by themselves, it was written by AI. What do you think, what we should, what we have to do in this situation? Uh, actually, uh, I think that this topic is out of my competence, uh, but uh, as a teacher, not only as a psychologist, I can just share my perspective, not advice, but just perspective that uh, I don't think that AI is a threat for us. Uh, it's a mismatch of this topic. Uh, and even though uh, some of students uh, started to use this uh, ChatGPT or some platforms to uh, make up some <clears throat> articles or uh, homework or something like this. Uh, it's really easy to uh, to get the information that it's not uh, their original work. And it's uh, when we explain, when we teachers explain our students that um, we cannot be. Um, I mean, we cannot do anything except uh, to raise awareness. Yes, on one hand, and uh, when we just explain them that uh, uh, they cannot just very easily lie to us to do things like that, uh, they understand that maybe they will find another more clever and more yeah. <laughs> smart way or creative way to <laughs> lie us, but. Mm, it's it's really easy to to find out uh, uh, which is original and we uh, yeah. which is making by ChatGPT or any other AA platforms. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now we have not the real solution, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, but it's not. Uh, it does not mean that uh, the problem is uh, AI. The problem is how we can uh, deal with this whole process. After, 20, after 10 or 15 years, uh, we will be at the stage that it's, it, I don't think that it will be a problem at all. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so Elena has also a question. Uh, do you have any advice how, on how to use my children's time properly so that we don't spend it on the phones? Uh, uh, I think that the key point here is uh, to find out how we can uh, plan our day. If we uh, just make some schedule that from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. we are doing this, from 2 p.m. till 7 p.m. we are doing this. And uh, when I'm uh, saying that we are doing it, it means that not only the children, but also with adults they should do something. And the schedule, to make a schedule, daily plan, is a very good solution from my experience. And after this, uh, when we see, and this plan should be on the wall, and everyone can see the, this timetable, and it, it will help us to, uh, to manage our daily time. There is another question. I think <clears throat> I was wondering how fast can teenagers become addicted to the internet? Yeah, uh, but it's not surprise, no, from surprisingly thing, because uh, I remember when mobile phones first, in general, came to to our everyday life. I was in ninth or tenth grade, and everyone just starting to use mobile phones, and not because uh that the mobile phone is big thing for us no because it's a funny thing and we can use it correctly and any gadgets and uh, even any platforms we can use uh properly and we can we we can use this uh, for for our maybe uh, development our mental uh, development our cognitive development our uh, intellectual development and uh, 
like everything, this thing also has pros and cons, and we should think and we should uh, start learning how to use all these devices because we want or don't want the get gadgets and uh, all uh, the these platforms is part of our life. We cannot just vanish them in one second. We should make uh, some adjustments with them. Uh, Mr. Shota, may I ask you one question? I am asking this question from uh, from parents' uh, point of view. I am parent as well, and uh, once I had a restriction of my children's phone on my children's phone. Uh, maybe you know the Family Link. It's such kind of application, and I uh, I could control my children's uh, phone how much time they have to spend on them. Uh, on internet, etc., what they can do, uh, what they can watch, and what they cannot watch. But it was very stressful for my children. And what do you think it is right from us to use such kind of applications to control our children? Uh, I think that it's really good idea to use these kind of things. Maybe also there are YouTube Kids or some platforms also. Uh, that uh, parents often use this and um, there is no any problem using these kind of things because uh, when, for instance, I, I don't know a lot of this, this thing you mentioned, I know, for instance, YouTube Kids platform and it's really good because there is big difference in uh, ordinary YouTube uh, application and the key uh, YouTube Kids application and uh, when the parents uh, just starting to use this YouTube Kids application, it prevent a lot of things from. Uh, yes, but uh, you know, the teenagers are not even satisfied with Kids YouTube, and yeah. when I yeah, 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 I mean it's up to twelve or eleven yeah. years old. Uh, and yes, my daughter was very was arguing with when I uh, when I turned off her phone. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's a it's a very uh, sensitive topic. Yeah. But uh, I think that uh, if you make uh, some kind of uh, statements together, uh, arrangements. I mean, yeah. you will just. Right, help but it works. Other. For a short time, only a short time, it works. Yeah, but uh, if uh, she or he realized that uh, uh, she or he should take some responsibility on on her or his habit or behavior or something like this, uh, he will or she will uh, easily learn how to manage yeah. things like and that. Sure but you have... that. Such kind of application is not the solution. No, it's not a solution. The solution is uh, uh, under the relationship of parent and child. Yeah. Um, uh, project um <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Zia asked a question. Uh, they have a uh, survey for uh, their students and uh, ask them, uh, is it a reason uh, that uh, they use gadgets, internet, all day? Uh, as I already mentioned in my uh, seminar, there is a two uh, uh, articles. One is uh, from 
PMC Psychology site, and the other one is World Health Organization, and the third one is University of Pennsylvania. All these studies, just uh, uh, the results shows us that uh, if you reduce uh, usage of uh, uh, these social networks or gadgets uh, every day, uh, how um, it will just affect in good way on our mental health. I mean, if we uh, if you use these platforms uh, four or five hours a day, yes, it's very negative aspect, it negatively affect on our mental health. And the main issue is how we can reduce it. And there is some kind of tactics, some kind of way, and each way is very individual and uh, uh, if we just starting to make some changes, as I already mentioned, the result will come. Thank you. Bye. 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 Goodbye.